If you are interested in teleprompters, then this one's for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And if you've watched my last two videos, then uh, the content of this one will probably not be uh, too much of a surprise to you because uh, the first one of the last two that I did was uh, on all about the Desview T3 teleprompter. And then the one I did last was about this, the Lilliput A7S field monitor. Now the Desview is intended to be uh, used with either an iPad or a uh, uh, phone or tablet or whatever as the sort of teleprompting screen and then you can fix it to either a uh, camera or a mobile in fact so simply slotting it over the end of your camera lens like this uh, and that then becomes your uh, your teleprompter so uh, it, as I say it's intended to be used with a mobile and the mobile comes with uh, or you can download their mobile app to allow to give you that sort of teleprompting capability with the uh, sort of scrolling text on the screen and it allows you to sort of flip the text obviously as you'd need to to mirror it so that when you look at it it's the right way around which always helps when you're reading <laughs> um, but that's not what I want this for. I don't actually want to do any teleprompting as such. What I want it for is to be able to uh, have eye contact on Zoom meetings or anytime I'm uh, basically speaking to anyone online really in a, in a sort of one-to-one -one context or one-to-many, however it is. <laughs> and it allows you to obviously look at the screen, which is in front of the camera, uh, but then the camera is still looking at you. So you end up looking at somebody rather than looking down at a picture of them on a screen below the camera like this, as so many meet Zoom meetings end up being. There is one slight thing that we're going to have to modify on this uh, as a uh, first step in order to actually make these fit. And that is because the mounting hole for the uh, the sort of camera iPad attachment, the uh, distance between the base of that and the, uh, the actual mounting hole is slightly less than the distance between the base of this and uh, this mounting uh, screw fixture. So all we need to do is where we've got this little hole just here, <laughs> we need to actually elongate that and make it a little bit longer. And I've already actually done that. And so that means that now the monitor will fit. If I uh, just do this, this is an absolutely riveting uh, viewing, I'm sure. Uh, I am actually going to do a bit more of a hack job on this, actually. But I'll tell, explain that in a little more, more detail later. And uh, hopefully that does not all end in tears as it did when I was five and got a new bicycle bell and decided to take it apart to find out how it works and I lost one crucial part so my bell no longer went ring-a-ding-ding -ding. it just went dink but anyway that's another story uh, I'll try not to repeat that this time so now here we go we've got the uh, the field monitor mounted onto the uh, the Desview and perfect <laughs> it literally just takes that hole just needs to be sort of maybe a quarter of an inch if that higher and what you can actually do with this is on the back you've got this adjustment screw so you can make this higher and lower or closer and further away to the uh, screen and the reason why you do that is because uh, the closer you are to the screen obviously the more the image of the monitor fills the uh, uh, the screen or the reflector I should say uh, and so yeah that's what that's for however what I have noticed is that actually the uh, T3 uh, could be or the A7 could actually be even closer still to the screen and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit more of a hack job. Let me just show you what I'm planning to do. There we go. I've uh, unscrewed that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove this piece altogether because it just slides off. And then what I'm going to do is using the screw that was previously holding this one in, I'm actually going to uh, attach this part to here. Now I should say this is going against all manufacturer's guidelines and I'm only just getting started because obviously this has got this little sort of shelf thing so that makes sure it keeps it nice and level whereas now that I've just put in one screw here then technically you know this can twist and turn and all those sorts of things so I do need to just make sure I get it absolutely straight um, and also in order to get that screw in you can see that I've sort of started to to bend the back of this a little bit so uh, that said I'm still going to do this because I can actually get the monitor even closer. So it can actually be that close. And what that does is it still really fills the uh, the sort of frame of this even more so to be taking up almost the sort of the total frame of it in terms of uh, when I'm looking at the reflection. Uh, but what it does is it does free up, uh, as you can see, 
this was on here it frees up almost an inch of space and why is that even an issue well it is for me because i still have my monitor or my i still still have my ca camera rather mounted on top of my monitor and so that extra inch is basically an extra inch of uh clearance that i've got or rather it means i can lower my camera down so you may not have even noticed this but my camera is actually slightly higher than it normally is and so i do want to just bring that down a bit and get it much closer to horizontal and so that is why i'm going to do that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually i use this uh, stuff called polymorph it's a moldable plastic i'm going to make a whole video about that as well because if you are a tech geek like me and you often find yourself looking for sort of macgyver solutions to problems and making little bits and bobs to uh, solve your needs uh then this moldable plastic's really great you just heat it up uh, in some boiling water take it out of the water and then you can mold it into any shape and then it sets as hard as a rock and so that is what i'm going to do with this what i plan to do is actually uh cut off the bottom and then i will use some of that plastic in here to just give me the same effect as this little shelf uh, and also just stiffen it up a little bit so uh, so that's what I'm going to do with that and I will report back with my findings because I'm not going to use that as part of this demo because it's not really for everybody to start uh, cutting up uh, bits of uh, plastic that can't be repaired <laughs> then uh, yeah I'm going to leave that for another video but it really is uh, uh, a good solution and I've got to say thanks again to Keith Keith Pelzer for recommending this because it saved me going down uh, another route which was the glide gear and uh, I was looking at a 12 or 14 inch monitor just for a teleprompter and I think that would have been a little bit overkill for what I want because it is just for those zoom meetings and uh, I don't need another full scale monitor sitting right above my other monitor because I've already got this 4k one so I think I will uh, I'll just stick with that. By the way, there's a couple of things in here that the, it is obviously designed as a field monitor for a camera. So you've got all sorts of metering and things like that on here. You can have a histogram or monitor audio levels and all those sorts of things. Uh, and it's just a case of going into the menus and switching all of that off because we just want a clean screen. And then that, this just plugs in. I should also say, <laughs> having said that's it, <laughs> I should also say uh, I've got a power supply here which plugs into the side like that and uh, it's plugged in and then i've also uh, got a uh, hdmi cable which plugs into here now i mentioned in my last uh, my last uh, video that you may want to get a an angled hdmi connector like this so that you can take your hdmi out to the side much like that and then your hdmi can go neatly out of the back however there's two issues for me first of all is Although I did order the right one, the one that I thought I needed, they sent the one going the opposite direction. So uh, uh, I will have to get the other one, but that goes out the front. It should go out the back. But in any case, it can't actually go out of the back because uh, even if I had the one going the right way, for me, my power cable would be right in the way of it. So uh, it is just going to have to be a case of uh, I could either get a 90 degree one turning up first and then have it go out the back like that which actually I may end up doing or I could just use a loose cable or I could just basically leave it like that I was just looking for a way to neaten it up and not have this sort of hanging out over the top of the uh, over the top of my monitor sort of heading back but uh, that's my OCD kicking in again really so I'll uh, I'll get back to you on what I do about my cable management uh, but apart from that it's all working fine so far well it is now uh, about seven hours later. <laughs> I, yeah, I actually wrapped up that other video and I thought, well, am I really that averse to uh, uh, editing that I don't just uh, get it all set up and then add the rest onto the end? Because otherwise I'm going to leave you hanging really onto as to how it actually all looks when it's in place. So uh, that's what I've done. So I am going to tag this onto the end. By the way, uh, if I ever do edits like this, uh, I just do them in uh, QuickTime. So I just go into QuickTime. Uh, you can do trim, cl uh, trim clip or split clip and then delete the old end which is what I'm going to do and then you can just add new clip to end and that's how I'll join this video onto the first so uh, you can do minor edits like that in uh, QuickTime quite effectively uh, I, I say quite effectively you judge for yourself how <laughs> how smooth it was there'll be no transitions or anything like that trust me so uh, yeah but anyway so let me just stop chatting on and uh, get over to uh, show you uh, how everything looks so uh, I've got my uh, Philips 42 inch monitor there and uh, I should probably do a review on that actually as well. It's uh, it's only available in uh, Asia and Australia, I think. 
uh, I think it's not available in the US this particular one, but it is it is actually a monitor. So it's a, a 4K um, uh, monitor as opposed to a 4K TV. But I just like the uh, the, the aspect ratio of it because it's basically like I've got four big uh, HD monitors uh, sort of in a two by two arrangement. I'm not a big fan of the really ultra widescreen sort of narrow thing that you end up looking all over the place for. I just like a bank of four monitors and this basically does that for me. Uh, without uh, having the sort of the seam down the middle of all the monitors so uh, this one works really well for me anyway I'm talking nonsense I'm uh, totally off topic so this is basically this is what we're here to talk about stop rambling on about the uh, the monitor Alec <laughs> this is the teleprompter in place and as you can see uh, I've got it set to just give me the output feed from Ecamm Live at the moment as I said before I'll probably just be only using this really for uh, more like eye contact for zoom meetings so I'll have the uh, the zoom output there but for the moment I've just put the Ecamm live one on so that you can see and uh, yeah if I uh, just have a little look down here you can see that the output is coming onto this screen and then it's being reflected up onto the screen up there which is what I can see and uh, yeah it fits really nicely onto the camera it's pretty uh, pretty low profile and I did just do that little bit of adjustment to the uh, the bottom I actually cut off about an inch from the bottom of the case and then I just uh, fixed it all together with uh, some moldable plastic that I use and I'm going to do a whole video on that actually because I do use it uh, all the time and uh, so any fellow MacGyver fans that don't mind taking a hacksaw to their electronic devices, <laughs> this uh, plastic comes in really handy for that. And then, yeah, the uh, the cable management in the end, I just used a sort of Velcro cable tie to tie the cables around the back. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to cut off that extra inch is because uh, now I've got this sort of clearance underneath my monitor, whereas before it would have been hanging down a bit too far. I would have could have obviously moved the monitor up, but my whole point was that I wanted the uh, the monitor as close to the TV as TV. <laughs> I wanted the camera as close to the monitor as possible uh, because obviously you don't want to have it too high so that I end up looking like I'm just looking up at it. So that is it in place and uh, yeah I did obviously go through and in the settings there's lots of uh, the default when you actually get the Lilliput is that it does have uh, like the on-screen histogram volume levels and things like that all associated with like if you're actually using this as a field monitor with your camera but I just turned all of those things off and then I flipped the screen around uh, one way and flipped it the other way so it now looks obviously perfect in the uh, in the window here so all in all really happy with it and once again shout out to Mr Keith Pelzer for the recommendation uh, it certainly uh, certainly does just exactly what I want and if I had gone down the uh, the route of getting something like a glide gear or something like that I think that that would be uh, yeah total overkill for me so uh, this is absolutely perfect so thank you again I will obviously leave links to everything in the description uh, that I've used in order to get this all set up and uh, I'll also leave a link to that video about that that moldable plastic that I'll uh, that I used actually on this one so I have already made the video so I'll leave a link to that as well for those who are interested but make sure you are supervised with an adult by an adult <laughs> when you start taking a hacksaw to your uh, your electronic devices and I'm not sure I'm a responsible adult really but uh, anyway there you go that's a, another story for another video <laughs> I hope you have found this interesting and useful and if you have then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel it uh, it really does help me out and uh, it's interesting to see obviously it gives me feedback <laughs> as to where if you are liking the videos that I'm making and if there is anything that uh, I've talked about in any of my videos for that matter that uh, you think could be uh, explained any better or any tips for how you think I could improve my video content then uh, feel free to speak up I'm always open to suggestions and uh, creative criticism uh, as well as uh, pats on the back <laughs> all comments are welcome and uh, incidentally uh, if you use a teleprompter and you've got any comments related to those that you think might be useful to me or anybody else who's watching this video then do leave those below as well because uh, we're all just on the same sort of learning journey really aren't we so always looking for uh, feedback and uh, new things to learn I think I've said enough there don't you <laughs> Uh, I will leave a link to uh, all the videos that I've mentioned and things like that in the description, obviously, as always. But in the meantime, feel free to check out some of my other videos coming up on screen next. Have a great day.